and welcome to a ninth and very belated episode of Exploring Imperator Realm. My name is Corinne Times New Rome Gerritsen, and today we're going to do something very different than what we usually do. Usually I check out the representation of different cultures in the game Imperator Rome. But today I want to know what the player really wants and what better way to do this than to look at the Steam Workshop and check out the mods that players make for this game. I don't know how many mods a game usually has, but this game has 740 mods which feel like quite a high number to me. I looked at all the most popular mods while I was making the script. They are still quite popular, so we're just going to go through that list I have of that time. On top of the list, I noticed with delight was the mod Interesting Treasures by Burium. Treasures can be collected within the game and can be placed in holy sites to provide a small bonus to all territories in the province. This is a historical mod awarded with 4 stars. Interesting Treasure adds 68 treasures to nations throughout Imperator Rome world. New treasure locations have been marked on the treasure map. It's not very accurate. As you can see, there are quite some interesting treasures on here. And the maker keeps adding new ones. These are indeed historical. It is very cool to see things like the Sacred Stone of Aphrodite, but also other cultures get their treasure. I have no hopes of pronouncing this right, but this is a very nice shield for the Celtic tribes. The maker even adds, I've only added treasures that have some historical sources and are likely to have existed. The way people awarded these efforts show that the interest in at least historical artifacts is quite big. The next historical mod on the list is the Re Republica, a basic cursus honorum by Captain Obvious. This cursus honorum was a sequential order of public offices held by aspiring politicians and it was designed for men of senatorial rank. The cursus honorum comprised a mixture of military and political administration posts and each office had a minimum age for election. Here the mod is described as the following. A character starts as a civilian, only being capable of promoting to a researcher. Obtaining the trait Quaestor then, you can promote said character to an officer, becoming a proprietor. Proprietors can then run for rulership, becoming proconsul. Only they can command armies and become governors. With the scheme he shows how it works and what is possible per title. We know quite a lot from sources, both literary as epigraphic ones, about the different stages one had to go through to come out on top of the political ladder. As one commenter points out, thanks. It's a shame they didn't put this in the base game, instead place the modern concept of the Republic on something ancient. I don't know if this is why the current system doesn't have these steps, or that it would complicate things too much in the game. But the maker is absolutely right in wanting to add this in the spirit of more historical accuracy. Then we have the 50% manpower and half unit skill mod by Zip Sop Dippity Pop Pop, which honestly is the best name on the list here. It continues on from the original, halving unit slash cohort sizes to 500 per unit, simultaneously halving manpower levels and garrison forts for every faction. I personally find that troop numbers and manpower levels feel far too high for the period. So here we have another mod that tries to achieve a greater accuracy for the historical period, this time by halving the armies. It is true that it's very hard to determine just how big armies used to be, but a lot of scholars believe that the numbers we find in literary sources are probably over-exaggerated. Landon, for example, states when talking about Xerxes' army, the sources expanded the king's army to impossible sizes. Cities were beggared by feeding the host and whole rivers ran dry when it drank. So it's probably a good call to make these armies a bit smaller. One of the most nuanced and complex mods for this game with the historical tag seems to be Roma Invicta. This has the aim to give Rome unique stuff as well as keeping it from becoming too OP to the rest. It focuses on more than just one area, for example the military traditions. The Roman story that has been told across Europe and the world is that during the Punic Wars a Carthaginian ship washed itself up on the Italian coast. The ship was soon discovered by the Romans who reverse engineered it, resulting in them acquiring naval technology that they would later use against Carthage. However, this isn't properly depicted in game. Now, I don't want to give the same ability for Rome to build Carthaginian ships because that wouldn't be historically accurate. And for the borders, I've played Rome before and the historic borders of the empire are not historic enough for me. This great emphasis on historical accuracy is very interesting to me. The description of this mod does a pretty good job at explaining why changing things and why it would make sense to do so. However, historical accuracy 
accuracy is not a straightforward thing. This is not just the case with this mod, but basically with all of these on the list in lesser or greater degree. And of course a lot that aren't even on this list. While the terms accuracy and authenticity are regularly used interchangeably and typically refer to a text adherence to establish or agreed upon historical fact, historical accuracy implies that we try to represent something with the greatest amount of correctness. Authenticity might be even more complex and variable, but usually refers to the experience of historical media, in this case the game, and the player's impressions of whether it captures the past, even when it is at odds with the available evidence. While the goal of making a game like this more historical accurate is an admirable one, sometimes the declared aim is to improve accuracy, while actually the maker of the mod does not feel a certain aspect is accurate, while it actually does not fit in with his idea of historical authenticity. Historical correctness on its own is a very complex thing. A lot of sources are contradictory. Sometimes we have very little sources and we need to fill in gaps. Sometimes sources have hidden agendas and portray something in a way that benefits their ulterior motive. But within this hard to navigate field, there are still some consensus. Throughout the series, I try to show what historical debates there were, but also try to state what is seen as fact or as close to the truth as we are able to get. The next mod is an example of when a player feels something shouldn't be there, while both the sources and the academic field agree that it should be there. This is me from the future, because while I was editing, I found out that the mod I'm going to talk about has been deleted. This mod was basically disabling all women from becoming tribe leaders, while there were a few of them in the base game. Now the comment section quickly turned a bit sour, which might be a reason why it's been deleted, and I tried to search the internet and find the original mod, but unfortunately I could only find some people vaguely mentioning it. And this is of course also something that we as historians have to deal with a lot of the time. We do not have the original source anymore. We find some traces, we find some people quoting it, we can sometimes find people reacting to it, and we try to recreate the original source. Well, in this case, I'm lucky because I'm an eyewitness. So I still have my notes and I can still say something about it, I just don't have anything to show you, basically but I still think it's important enough to include in this video. The prime example is that of the mod fixing gender equality. Back when I was making the video of Barbaric Britain, I actually wanted to reflect on the choice of making some women as tribe leaders, even when the Embrace Social Equality option was turned off, but decided not to since I would have had too little time for the other things. I made this mod in order to be more historically accurate. On the basis of my personal readings, I think none of the tribal communities were full gender equality. Disabled equality gender on Iberian and Britannia countries. This mod refers to the Celtic women leading the tribes. The problem here is that the description of the mod suggests that there is absolutely no reason at all why women should be leading those tribes. And indeed the commentary section is full of people claiming that the game developers only did this to fit a social justice warrior agenda and this would be fake news and liberal propaganda and these are just some of the nicer comments. It is simply false that there is absolutely no evidence of women leading tribes in Celtic tribes. As for all Celtic things, the evidence is problematic and not straightforward. I'm not claiming that the leaders of the tribes would have been divided 50% men and 50% women, but the probability of women never appearing as leaders would also be unlikely. The problem here might lay in a bit of historiography. In the 19th century, the romantic idea of the noble savage was combined with the Celtic warrior queens and the idea of Celtic matriarchy was developed, which was later used by modern feminist authors. The matriarchy theory was heavily debated and by most discarded. Literary sources by Greek, Romans and archaeological sources still challenge the ideas put forward in media, like this mod. For example, Tacitus wrote, it was indeed usual for Britons to fight under leadership of women. But because the feminist authors might have taken the idea too far, the entire idea of female leadership might have been discarded for that reason. What about the archaeological sources that find so many male warrior graves? While this 
was a self-fulfilling prophecy. When archaeologists found a sword in a grave for a long time in previous century, the grave was presumed to be a man's, while the absence of a sword and the presence of jewelry was presumed to be a woman's. A big problem was then encountered when DNA research entered the stage. Grace's swords suddenly turned out not to have male bones, but female bones. This is, in my eyes, testimony how for a long time we looked at history and traces with our own ideas and prejudices, and that we created a narrative that fitted our world perspective. I'm not the only one to bring this up though. Another commenter also expresses this idea. For the Norse cultures, as the recently discovered burial mount of Norse warrior appeared to be female. Of course, on most graves there has never been DNA research and there might never be. And secondly, of course, we cannot take everything of ancient authors as face value. That is why it would have been fine with me if the mod just changed the amount of female leaders by half or more. But by completely eradicating the possibility, I think they went way too far. Because only a few tribes start with a female leader in the first place. The problem is that they are not bothered by other little things, like the way to big emphasis on the use of elephants on the Italic Peninsula by Carthage, by the barbaric military traditions that have been overhauled for the new updates. But no, the specific focus is on women that should not be able to hold any offices at all, not even the religious high ranks that were well attested that women were holding those positions. And they simply exclaim that it is all part of a social justice warrior propaganda. In this case, they are not after historical accuracy, but they are after their own view of history. Let's mirror this to another mod, Joseph Immersed of Etruria. In this mod, the maker tries to incorporate more Etruscan locations, names known from inscriptions and Etruscan government titles, which I suggested might not have been used because we are unsure of what they're actually used for. But here the maker is very transparent about the reasons and origins. The office titles were a bit less simple, of half of these the meaning is simply not known and I assign them based purely on personal preference. For the other half, my source at least gives a very tiny bit of information about meaning and I added a 100% invented interpretation based on that. It still uses actual titles, we just don't know if he used them for the right offices and they are very upfront about how they appointed them on personal preference. And they even provided sources for their mod. They even changed the name Elbio Vultureno, a name that indeed only appears in a 15th century source and replace it with something more Etruscan. And this is how good research and good use of the term historical accuracy is made. Be upfront about what your sources are and why you want to change something. A good amount of the mods out there deal directly with historical accuracy. But just as with things you read on the internet, you should not always trust that modders get it right. In whatever way, historical accuracy seems to be very important to the players, since a lot of mods are justified this way. This accuracy actually seems to mean authenticity, which is not the same for everyone. If you are looking for mods that, in my opinion, get it right, look for those like Joseph's, who are clear about the parts where they wrote, for better or worse, their own feeling of history into the mod. There are very many very crafty mods out there and I could only scratch the surface in this video. It is great to see that people are putting so much time and effort into enriching the game with even more history. And with that I want to end this series. This is the final episode of Exploring Emperator Rome. I want to thank you one last time very much for watching. But keep a close look on our YouTube channel because you never know what new and interesting videos we will make in the future.